Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's get started and look into our daily quiz. Let's look into the first question. Consider the following statements with respect to lithium. It is considered to be the lightest or the least dense metal on earth. It is highly reactive and flammable and must be stored in vacuum, inert atmosphere or inert liquid such as purified kerosene or mineral oil. Lithium salts have proven to be useful as a mood stabilizer and antidepressant in the treatment of mental illness such as bipolar disorder. Which of the statements given above is our correct? The answer to this is 1, 2 and 3. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the PIB makes a reference to lithium. Let us try and understand what are these options. When we look into the first option, it is considered to be the lightest or the least dense metal on earth. This statement is right. What do we mean by it? We have to consider what is called as the density. What is density? Density is the amount of matter per unit of the volume. The less matter there is in a space, the lighter the substance. So the lightest metallic element is the one with the lowest density. The lightest or the least dense element happens to be lithium and lithium has an atomic number of 3 on the periodic table with a density of 0.534 gram per cubic meter. So the first statement is right. When we look into the second statement, yes, it is highly reactive and flammable and which is why it has to be placed in purified kerosene or mineral oil. This statement is once again right. Third statement is also right that the lithium salts have proven to be useful as a mood stabilizer and antidepressant in the treatment of mental illness such as bipolar disorder. If you look into the facts, lithium is a chemical element that occurs first in the alkalis of the periodic table. It is the lightest solid metal. It's moderately abundant and present in the earth's crust in 65 parts per million. What are the properties of the lithium? Lithium takes an active part in many reactions with organic and inorganic reactants. It reacts with oxygen to form monoxide and peroxide. Metallic lithium reacts extensively vigorously with water. It has very low density and low viscosity and metallic form of the metal is soluble in aliphatic amines of a short chain like ethamaline but insoluble in hydrocarbons. These are some of the facts which can be important from the preliminary exam examination point of view. Now let's look into the next practice question. With respect to child labor, prohibition and regulation amendment act of 2016, which of the following statements is are correct? Children below the age of 14 years will be allowed to work in occupations except for 18 occupations and 65 process. Children below the age of 14 years will be allowed to work in family business enterprises only if they are non-hazardous. Which of the statements are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the PIB speaks about children and adolescents who are prohibited to work and help in mind. When we look into the child labor law, a major amendment was introduced back in the year 2016. So what were the changes introduced in 2016? Earlier, we had children below the age of 14 years who will be allowed to work in occupations except for 18 occupations and 65 process. But this was changed, changed in the year 2000. 2016 where it said that there was complete prohibition of employment of children below the age of 14. So this is a major change that was introduced with the amendment that was introduced in 2016. When we look into the second statement, children below the age of 14 years will be permitted to work in family business occupation, both hazardous and non-hazardous. But when it comes to the amendment introduction, children below the age of 14 years will be allowed to work in family business only if they are non-hazardous. Children above the age of 14 years didn't have any prohibitions on employment. Children between 14 years are categorized as adolescents and are not allowed to work in hazardous occupations. Adolescents were not provided with any working regulations regarding working hours and conditions. Regulated working conditions for adolescents working in non-hazardous occupations was introduced in the year 2016. The other major changes introduced were that the contraventions of the provisions were non-cognizable in the earlier act and now it has become a cognizable offence. These are some of the major changes introduced in the 2016 amendment. Now let's look into the next practice question. Which amongst the following genetically modified crops have been approved for commercial cultivation in India? Brinjal, 
cotton, gold and rice, soya bean. The answer to this is two only, which happens to be cotton. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article here speaks about BT cotton. BT cotton is the only GM crop which has been approved for commercial cultivation in India. So whenever a BT cotton has to be released into the market, what you require is the approval from the government of India. And that approval will be given by the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. So this committee is a statutory committee constituted under the rules for manufacture, use, import, export and storage of hazardous microorganisms or genetically organisms or cells rules of 1989 framed under Environmental Protection Act of 1986. So remember the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee was framed under Environmental Protection Act of 1986. Only after the clearance is given by this committee that is when a crop if it is genetically modified can be introduced at the commercial level. So clearance of Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee is mandatory for the environmental release of genetically modified crops as per the rules of 1989 state or the union biotechnology coordination committee district level committees are responsible for monitoring instances of illegal cultivation of gm crops and taking appropriate action under environmental protection act of 1986 the chief secretary of the state or the union territory is the chairperson of state biotechnology coordination committee and any complaint that comes to the jeac secretariat will be immediately sent to chief secretary they will verify and in case it is illegal in nature not approved by this particular committee it will be immediately banned and as a result whatever penal provisions are present will be enforced on those people who are cultivating such crops so as of now bt cotton is the only gm crop which has been approved for the commercial cultivation in india now let's look into the next practice question Arrange the following islands from north to south. We have Smith Island, Long Island, Havelock Island and Rutland Island. The answer to this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Why have we taken this practice question? Because this article on the PIB makes a reference to the Havelock Island, Long Island, Port Blair, so on and so forth. So if we look into the map, first what we have is the Smith Island followed by the Long Island followed by the Havelock Island and finally what we have is Rutland Island. If we consider the arrangement from north to the south, what we have first is the Smith Island followed by the Long Island followed by the Havelock Island and finally what we have is the Rutland Island. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4. So the answer to this would be 1, 2, 3, 4. This article further makes a mention of the Lakshadweep Island which is Agati, Minikoi and Kavarati. Arrange them from south to north and put it on the comment section. Now let's look into the next practice question. With reference to proposals of the Cripps mission, consider the following statement. The Constituent Assembly would have members nominated by the provincial assemblies as well as the princely states. Any province which is not prepared to accept the new constitution would have the right to sign a separate agreement with Britain regarding its future status. Which of the statements given above is are correct? The answer to this is two only. Why is the first statement wrong? That is because when we look at the first statement, members of the assembly would be partly elected by the provincial assemblies through the proportional representation and partly nominated by the princes. As a result, we have the first statement which is wrong, but the second statement is right and this happens to be a previous year question from the year 2022. Now let's look into the fact of the day. The fact of the day for today's discussion is Eastram portal. What is this Eastram portal? Eastram portal happens to be the first time in the country that a system has been developed to register 38 crores unorganized workers. Who are these unorganized workers? They have been defined under the Unorganized Workers Social Security Act of 2008. For example, a home-based worker, self-employed worker or a wage worker is called as a person who is working in the unorganized sector. So an unorganized worker who is working in the unorganized sector, he can be a home-based worker, self-employed worker or a wage worker. The Eastram portal will cover all these unorganized workers of the nation and help them link to the social security schemes of the government of India. So under this scheme, 
2 lakh accidental insurance cover will be provided to every registered unorganized workers. Every registered unorganized worker shall be issued Ishram card with a unique universal account number and will be able to access the benefits of various social security schemes through card anywhere, anytime. So what are the objectives of the portal? Creation of a centralized database of all unorganized workers, including construction workers, migrant workers, gig and platform workers, street vendors, domestic workers, agriculture workers, so on and so forth. This will further improve the implementation efficiency of social security services for the unorganized workers, portability of the social security and welfare benefits to the migrant and the construction workers, and easy to share information with various stakeholders such as ministries or departments, boards or agencies, organizations of the central and the state government. So the minute there is an unorganized worker who wants to claim the benefits from it, he has to register with the eShrum site. So basically, the employee must have the Aadhaar number. He must also have an Aadhaar connected cell phone number, a bank account number according to the eShrum website. So the documents required include Aadhaar number, Aadhaar linked active mobile number, bank account details and the age should be between 16 to 15 years. So a set of eligibility requirements have been released by the ministry and only those who are eligible workers who fulfill the criteria can register themselves on the portal. The worker must not also be a member of EPFO, ESIC or the NPS because these are formal in nature and if they belong to the unorganized sector working as unorganized workers and fulfill all these criteria, they would be able to get these social benefit schemes. It is this that we have to understand with respect to this topic. So this is it for today. Thank you for watching. All the best.